Okay, uh, uh, let's get started. Uh, don't forget uh, check to check your attendance on the blackboard. Okay. Uh, check your attendance on the blackboard. So you know what this is. Uh, in this class, we use the self attendance check system. So I will not check your attendance, right? So check your attendance on the blackboard by yourself. And then your attendance will be checked uh, from this uh, class, okay? So as I mentioned, so I will not check your attendance for, for the uh, past two weeks, but uh, from this class, I will check your attendance, okay? So please check your attendance on the blackboard. Okay, so I will leave what we learned in the previous class. Okay, so what did we learn? So we learned about the arithmetic, actually the uh, audition of the binary number systems, right? <coughs> so, <coughs> but, you know, <coughs> sorry, uh, binary number system is actually it's uh, the same number system with uh, some normal number system, uh, you know, the decimal number system. But only difference is the base is the, the base is two, right? And then in the digital, digital systems, we use binary number systems because so each digit, <coughs> each digit of the binary number system use only one and zero, right? And then it also in the in the digital system, the data and numbers are represented using only one and zero. So it means that uh, in, the, in in the digital system we use we we need to use our binary number systems. Uh, actually, the addition addition is the same to the uh, normal addition of the decimal numbers. Okay. But so you need to remember that. Uh, so in the binary numbers, actually, uh, in the digital system, the digit, the digit of number or data. So so actually, we need to assign hardware resources. Okay. So for not to represent the digits of numbers or data. Okay. It's a fixed. The digit of number or number is fixed, right? So we actually, if we do not assign any hardware resources to the so these numbers or uh, data of the, this, the system, then we cannot change. We cannot uh, increase or we cannot reduce the, the number of digits in the data or number. So you need to, you need to, uh, uh, consider this, okay, in the digital number system, okay. <clears throat> so, which means that we need to consider overflow uh, when we uh, calculate the binary numbers, okay. Also, uh, in the previous class, we learned about the uh, negative numbers, right? So, and then I uh, <clears throat> I explained the two different. Uh, representation of the negative numbers, right? So I get sign and magnitude numbers and two complement numbers. And then I mentioned that in the, in the digital system also in the, in the computer systems, we use we use uh, two complement numbers for representing negative numbers, right? And why? Because if we use the sign and magnitude, then the addition, addition of the result of the positive and negative numbers is wrong. It's, it's incorrect, right? But if we <clears throat> if we use the two complement number, the result the result is correct, right? Okay, so, okay, subtraction is the same. Okay, so I explained this slide. Okay, so, uh, okay, so, and, and then uh, let's think about the extension, extension of the number of digits in the decimal numbers. So why, why extension, the bit extensions are required for uh, binary numbers? 
Okay. So, so as I mentioned, you need to consider the digit. The digit of a binary number is assigned, assigned, assigned by hardware resources. Okay. But sometimes we need to we need to uh, handle the larger numbers. So for example, so actually in a C, so <clears throat> think about the C. Sometimes we can declare <coughs> sorry. <coughs> okay. Some, <coughs> oh, sorry. Uh, sometimes we can declare a variable using integer type like int a. And then what is the range? <clears throat> what is the range of this variable? So I mentioned that the number of bits, the number of bits assigned to this variable is 32 bit, right? It's a 32 bit. And then so there is no unsigned here. So actually A is the signed number, right? So what is the range? The range is minus two to the power of 31 to the two to the power of 31 minus one, right? But sometimes we want to represent <clears throat> a very large number, okay, using in the C. Then what is required? We require the different, different data type. And then it's called long. Okay. So long. So look, we can declare a variable using long data type. And then the number of bits assigned to this variable A will be 64 bit. Okay. So what is the request? So, so we want uh, it's a B, okay, it's a B. So, so let us assume that we want to generate, we want to calculate the C equal A plus B, C equal A plus B. Then C is the long data type. Then what is the required for this C? So, so in the C, the data type, the data type has its own size. So that means the, number of bits so okay so a is the 32 bit data and then b is the 64 bit data okay so what is the required so we need to perform a plus b but this is the 32 bit number plus 64 bit number okay so it's like the uh five plus uh, six, one, twenty-six, like this. So the, the result, the result is the number of digit for the result it will be same to the, the B, right? Because the, the number of digit for B is larger, okay? So but what is required in the hardware? So in the hardware, A. So we need to apply extension, bit extension for this data A. So bit extension means that we can we need to increase the number of bits assigned to the A. So which means that we need to make the assigned bit, number of assigned bits for A 64 bit. Okay, same to the this bit. Then what's the problem? A. So think like this. So let us assume that so it's a different uh, example. So because the 32 bit is very large. So let us assume that A has the it's a four bit data. It's a four bit signed data. And then B is the eight bit signed data. Then we want calculate the C equal A plus B. Then it looks like this.
tan 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 plus tan 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 and then it will generate the C. But let us assume that the A is the negative number. Then the sine bit is the MSB of A. The sine bit is one, right? So for example, it's minus one. So it's a one, 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 one. And then let us assume this is the another uh, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 zero. Okay, this is the A bit number, right? B is the A bit number. So then how can we expand? How can we uh, expand the number of bits for A? So if we just add zero, like the normal number. So actually this is this is the example of the normal decimal number system, right? 123 plus five, but it is it is equivalent to the 0, 0, 005 plus 123, right? Because the, the this digit is number of this digit is a zero, and then number of this digit is a zero. That's what we do in the for the normal numbers in the real world, right? But if we apply the same same rules, same rule to the this signed number system. The result will be incorrect. Why? Why? That's the problem. If we just add zero to the, the in order to extend the extend the number of bits, then what's the problem? It becomes positive number. Why? Right. So this one 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 one. So by adding four zeros, four zeros, but so like the normal, normal decimal number system, but it becomes positive number, not negative. It, it was a negative number, but if we just add zero, then it will be positive number. So it's deeper. So the, the, this number is changing, then the result will be also incorrect, right? So what do we do? So actually, so in this case, we need to repeat the MSB, the sign B. So, so actually there are two approaches. So like the, the, if we want to extend the number of bits in the, in the binary number, there are, there are two approaches, the sign extension and zero extension. Actually, you know, in the, in the normal number, the unsigned number, okay, so unsigned number, we just, we need to add zeros to extend the number of bits, right? So for example, oh, let, let us assume that one, 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 one is the unsigned number. And then we, we want extend number of bits, right? So when the number of bits are increased, the extended, then the value, the value needs to be unchanged, right? So in this case, so this if, if this number is the unsigned number, then this is the positive number. Then what is the this value? So this value is the, the 15, right? And then we need to just add zero because this is the unsigned number. So if we just add any ones, then the, the value, the value will be changed. But the different case is that oh, this is the signed number. Okay. Then what is this value? This value is the minus one, right? And then, so if we want, if we want to increase the number of bits for this number, then we need to just add one. So for the eight bit data, so eight bit data, this value is the same to minus one. 
right? So you need to you need to remember that you need to memorize for the signed number system. So if you want to extend the number of bits, then we need to repeat the MSB, that is the sign bit. But if we want to increase the number of bits for the unsigned data, then we need to add the zeros. Okay. So that it is because we we make the number unchanged. Okay. Even though the big number of bits are extended, the value. The value is to be unchanged, so we need to apply the appropriate extension, like the sign extension or zero extension, based on the signed number or unsigned number. Okay, so this is just an example, so it can be this. So sign extension. So if the MSB is zero, then we can repeat the zeros. And then if the MSB is one, so this is a sign bit, okay? Then we can repeat the, the, the same numbers, okay? So actually it's simple. We can check just the MSB, the most significant bit of the signed number. Then we can just repeat the same bit, okay? And then it's the same. One, 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 one. And then this is the zero extension. So the, the, for the zero extension, so we need to apply the zero extension for the unsigned number. Okay. So must be applied to the unsigned numbers. Okay. So you need to remember this. So it is because in the computer, in a computer, this can be this operation can be required. So as I mentioned, so actually the computer can handle 32-bit data, 32-bit data, but we can, the computer can handle 64-bit data also, like the 64-bit data plus 32-bit data. Then the bit extension is required. Then we can apply the appropriate bit extension method in our computer, okay? So actually in a C, like the A equal B plus C, then if A is, oh, like, sorry, like the C equal A plus B, okay? And then so we can declare like the long B and C, and then int A, then, the C, the C knows that the A is the signed number, then the sign extension will be automatically applied. Okay. Okay, so actually that's what I what I missed in the previous class. Okay, so so the today's class, so now the, we will learn about the basic logic gate. Okay. So, so what is the last gate? So actually until until now, so we just learned, we have learned about the binary numbers and then we have learned about the, the digital system concept, okay? So digital design concept. So, and then you need to remember that, oh, digital systems handle binary data or binary numbers, okay? So that's why, we need to learn about the binary number systems. So in order to represent the, the numbers, that we can apply the signed numbers or unsigned numbers, okay? And then you need to uh, memorize that. So in, in the computer system, we use two complement, two complement number systems for the uh, signed numbers. Then, now, so, so this is data, numbers. Numbers are data which will be processed by a computer system, okay? A computer system is a digital system, and then a computer system will handle or will process binary numbers. Then how? 
So what is the processing? What is processing? It's like this. So it's the function and then input data is given to the assorted black box. And then this is the, this black box perform of assorted function. And then output is generated. So that's uh, some processing system in the real world. And then actually the logic gate is the same, okay? So logic gate, the, this is the definition of a logic gate. So what is the definition? The simple digital circuit. So digital circuit. And then they take one or multiple binary input. Okay, so binary input. So it receives a binary input and then also produce a binary output. So this is the definition of a logic gate. But it's very simple. Right? Actually, the logic gate receives the, the binary data or binary numbers and then also generate the binary output based on the a certain rule, okay? Like the function, okay? That is the, the, the definition of a logic gate. And then actually there are various kinds of logic gates in the, in the digital world, okay, like the, so it just performs the logic function. So like the inver inversion and or and nor. And then there are some, this logic, uh, also logic gates can receive a single, single bit data or two bit data or multi, multi bit data. Okay, like the single, so actually the NAT or buffer receive the one bit data and then so this logic gate like, and or exclusive one. So this is the very basic logic gate. It receives, the, uh, they receive two bit data. Okay, and then sometimes we can make the multi bit uh, logic gate. Okay, so uh, actually, like the one plus one equal two in the in the, in the, in the one plus one equal two. Actually, this logic gate just this uh, defines the so output output based on the input. So actually, in, in, in the in the elementary school, we learn one plus one equal two. Actually, in the kindergarten, okay. It's not, so like this, so this is the basic, the very basic logic gate. So actually this, this is just the <coughs> definition, right? So this is also this is also a kind of a definition that we need to memorize, right? It's the same to the basic logic gate. And then I can explain why, but because this is a kind of definition, so we need to memorize the the definition that means the, the defined function in the basic logic gate. Okay, uh, let's start from the uh, single input logic gate. So, actually, uh, in the in, in this class, I just use usually I represent an input of the logic gate as A or B or C, and then the output. For the output, I usually use X, Y, Z. Okay. And then this is the single output, so I use Y. Okay. So let's start from the very basic logic gate, which is a one bit input logic gate. Okay. So this logic gate received one bit signal. So input is only single input, so A. And then the output is Y. So this is the one bit input. And then there are total two cases, two different cases, <laughs> zero and one. Okay, because this is the binary data. Okay, so one bit data. So we can just uh, consider two different inputs, zero and one. So, and then this is not. So it performs inversion. Okay, so inversion. So that's why this is this is actually this is called the NAT gate. Also, it is called the inverter. 
because it performs inversion of a bit. So what is inversion? So zero is changed to the one, and then one is changed to the <coughs> zero, right? So, <coughs> so as in the in the first one, second class, I mentioned that the one, the one in the distance system is represented the true or high voltage, or and then zero it represents false or low voltage. So inversion, the true is changed to the false, or false is changes to the true, right? So that is called the inversion. So one and zero. This is the definition of not gate. And then this is the symbol, symbol of not gate. So we need to also uh, memorize the symbol, symbol of the logic gate, because uh, in this class, I will use the symbol, symbol of the logic gate to represent the, um, some logic gate, okay? So it is triangle and then there is a circle and then this circle is called the bubble. Okay. Oh, that's why. Why did I explain about the bubble? So it's so easy because so in the logic gate symbol, bubble actually represents the inversion. So we will uh, we will learn about the, some uh, different logic gates such as the NAND or NOR, uh, exclusive NOR, and you can also find a bubble in the symbol. But just to just to remember just to remember that the bubble in the logic gate represent inversion. So it's a simple, right? So A is given to the input of the is K, and then you can find the bubble. So it means inversion. So output is just inverted. And then another simple one bit logic gate is buffer. Okay, it's a buffer. And then actually, so you cannot find any bubble here. Okay, you cannot find any bubble. So which means that it's not inverted. The signal is not inverted. So it's zero and one. Right, it's very simple, right? <laughs> so, and then also, also you can think that why? Why do we need buffer? But sometimes in a circuit, in the circuit, so we require buffer. So we will, I will explain later, but sometimes, sometimes we require buffer, okay? And then actually, so in this class, so in this, in this class, so we will learn, so we are learning about the basic logic gate, like a symbol, right? But you need to remember that actually these logic gates are implemented using electric circuits, okay? So why, so in the first class, I, I mentioned that the logic gates are related to the hardware implementation. So why do we learn about the, does the uh, digital logic system or digital logic gate in this class? Because we want to understand how a computer hardware is implemented. And then actually a complex computer hardware is implemented using basic logic gates. So actually basic logic gates are circuits, electric circuits. So it means we can implement, we can make basic logic gates using transistors, okay? So we will learn about the transistors also later. So actually by assembling, by assembling these logic gates, we can generate the, the complex logics, a complex system. So which means that by assembling a certain circuit, then we can make very complex chips, very complex DLSI, integrated circuit, very large uh, integrated system, okay? So it's the start, start point, the start point, okay? We just start from the very simple circuit or very simple gate, okay? Just, just to memorize. 
Okay, so just remember that bubble, it represents inversion. Okay, now let's learn about the two input logic gate, so end gate and or gate. So this is the symbol of the end gate. So then this is the symbol of or gate. Only difference though, this is vertically, and then this is curved. Okay. So as you can see, the end gate receives two bits, two input bits, A and B. So I mentioned that in the in the in, the, in this class, I usually use A, B, C for the input data or input signals, and then it generates the one input, uh, what one bit output. Okay, so why one bit output? So because there are two input bits, we can consider four different input cases, right? For from 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So we can consider four different input cases for the end gate. And then, so we can define the output. But as you can see, this is and okay, and the idea we can easily uh, uh, <clears throat> think about the end and logic. What is end? So in you know C like the, some condition and B. So if, you know to so if if A is true and then B is true, then the output of this condition becomes true. This is the end, right? So it's the same. In the, in the logic gate, in order to make the output true or one, then all inputs, all inputs need to be true or ones, right? That is the definition of the <coughs> end gate, okay? So output becomes one if all inputs are ones. That is the definition. So we can generate the result easily of zero because all false, all, all inputs are false. And then it's also zero because A is false, zero, B is false, and then this is one. So that is the definition of end gate. Then how about or? So what is the word it? And then what is the or in C? Like A or B. If A is true or B is true, then the, this condition becomes true. So we simply use or in C, but in any programming language actually. Actually in the real world, right? So what is the definition of working? If at least one of input one of inputs is true, then the output is true. That is the definition of working. So at least if one of inputs is true, then output becomes true. That is the working. So how about the so? We can consider also four different input cases from 0, 0 to 1, 1. What is the output? It's a 0, okay? It's a first, first, 0. But, oh, B is a true, so it becomes 1. A is a true, so 1. So both are true, and it's 1. That is the definition of work it, okay? It's simple, right? Actually, in the, in the real world, we, we already used the, the concept of and and or. Okay. So this is the result. And then also, you need to remember that uh, actually, we learned about the Boolean equation. And in the Boolean equation, the end gate is represent, represented like multiplication. So I so this is the input and this is the input and then y equal a b. So it's a it means the uh, end gate. 
but it looks like multiplication. So why? Actually, the property, the property of end gate is similar to the multiplication, right? So you know, so like this. If zero multiply zero is a zero, <laughs> zero multiply by one is a zero, zero, the one multiply one is it one. <coughs> so is it because the the property, the property of end gate is similar to the multiplication, then in the Boolean equation, then we represent an end gate like multiplication of the two inputs. How about the OR gate? So as you can see, we use the plus sign. It looks like the add addition, but it's not real addition. So I mentioned the Boolean equation, okay? It's different from the, the normal addition. But for the OR gate in the Boolean operation, Boolean equation, we use plus sign. So addition, addition operator, to represent OR gate. So why? Is it because the property of OR is also similar to the addition? Right. Zero plus zero equals zero. Anything plus is this one, but <clears throat> only the plus is this one. So one plus one equals one. The Boolean equation. So just to Remember the, this one also okay. Uh, so I, I I missed this one. So in the in the Boolean equation, not gate is represented using bar, okay, bar of the signal. Then so why equate right? this is just a buffer, okay. So bar means the actually inversion, okay. Oh, uh, then we can consider more two input logic gate. And so actually, so for the two input logic gate, we can just uh, memorize six different logic gates. So end gate, or gate, and exclusive or, and NAND door, exclusive door. But if you see the symbol of NAND door and exclusive door, and you can find a bubble. So actually, it's inversion. Okay. So now, so this is a kind of new logic gate, exclusive or. Okay. So what is exclusive or? So exclusive. Okay. So it means that if A is not equal to B, then uh, C becomes true. Okay, so exclusive or so it means that if the values of A and B are different, then we can think we just mentioned that our oh, output is becomes true. That is the definition of exclusive or. Okay, and then we use the plus and <laughs> And circle the plus sign inside of a circle to represent an exclusive or gate, and then this is the exclusive or so exclusive. So, so that's why we use the X, okay? Exclusive. Then, what is the output? What is the output of exclusive or? So, it's just very similar to the this sign. So we need to check the, we need to check if two input signals are the same or not. Okay. So this is same. So output is zero. Okay. Because it's the same. And then it's different. And then it's a different. So it's a one. Okay. If A and B are different, then output of exclusive or becomes one. Oh, is it? Same. It's the same as a zero. So this is the uh, <coughs> definition of exclusive or. So as I mentioned, this is just the definition. So, so you need to memorize. Okay. And then actually, 
uh, there are different uh, two input gates here is a NAND, NOR, and exclusive <coughs> NOR. But you can find that <coughs> N, N is added to the, the three basic gates we learned. Right? And we learned about the end gate, we learned about the OR gate, and we learned about the exclusive OR gate. But NAND, NOR, exclusive NOR, you can find it, just N. So N is added. So N is just in the present, not, okay? This is not. So NAND is just, just it, the NAND is equivalent to, to the not plus end, okay? Also in the symbol, you can find a bubble here. And then I also mentioned that a bubble represent inversion. So, so if you see the symbol of a net gate, can you, uh, if we just uh, see the symbol of uh, a net gate, you can find, oh, this is the end gate, and then bubble is here. So what is what does that mean? So out to the hook for the end NAND gate for the NAND gate, the output of end gate is inverted. Okay. So right. So, so if we symbol of the end gate, so end gate looks like this. And then if we just add bubble, so I mentioned that this represents inversion, okay, the bubble here. So which means, oh, so end gate, the output of end gate is inverted. So what is the output of end gate? H, one, 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 two. So output of end gate is inverted. Nor is the same, and then this is the symbol in the Boolean equation. So right, so A, B is the end gate, and then we add bar on the A, B. So it represents the end gate, okay? No, it's the same. Okay, as you can see, power is here. Then what is this one? It's one, seven, zero, 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 okay? So output, output of OR gate is inverted. That is the NOR gate. So you can find the A plus B and R. Okay. R here. This is the NOR gate in the Boolean equation. Exclusive NOR is the same. Exclusive NOR. You can find the bubble here. So which means that <clears throat> so the exclusive OR gate is inverted. So it's one zero zero one. But we can also find the sum. So this is the symbol in the Boolean equation. But we can find the meaning of the exclusive NOR. So what's the meaning? If two inputs are the same, then the output becomes true. Okay, so it's the same. Output uh, becomes true. So for the exclusive or, so you mean it's exclusive, so A and B are different. If the value of A and B are different, then exclusive or becomes one. So it checks the inequality. Okay? But if two values are the same, then we can use the exclusive nor. Okay? So if two bit Two bit values are the same, and output becomes one. That is the exclusive norm. So it's just simple, right? So actually, we need to we can memorize the not gate and then end gate and the or gate and then exclusive or gate. Then then the nor exclusive norm. It's just the not plus n and then not plus or and then not plus exclusive or. But uh, 
in the circuit, in the circuit, we frequently use NAND gate, door gate, exclusive door gate. So you can think that, oh, in, in, we are, it's easier for us to understand about the end gate and or gate, but actually when we implement our circuit, uh, the, the integrated circuit, then we frequently use end gate, door gate, and end gate and door gate. Actually, actually, the exclusive or and exclusive or is the same. <laughs> so it is because of some cost. Okay, so. That's why we are learning about the some, some logic. Logic actually uh, in, the, in the later class, so we will learn about the, some uh, logic theorem, okay, like the mathematics theorem. But so and then those theorems are required for optimizing circuits, okay, logic circuits. Just a minute, but so actually you can memorize. Not gate, end gate, or gate, and exclusive or, and then that's it. Those are very basic uh, logic gates. Okay, so we can also define so multi-input logic gate like the so door three and then end three. So because there are three bit, the three bits, so we use three bits for input. Then we can consider eight different cases <laughs> from zero, zero, zero to one, 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 okay? Then also, but if we just uh, understand the, the operation and definition of a basic logic gate, and then we can easily calculate, or we can easily uh, figure out the output of this door three and the multi-input logic gate, door three or and the three. So how about the door three? So actually it's like the A plus B plus C. In the, in the Boolean equation, it's A plus B plus C. So what does that mean? It means A or B and <laughs> A or B and or C, okay? The first, we can apply the OR gate for the first two inputs, and then we can, for the, for the result of the, this A plus B, A or B, then we can also apply another OR. This is the A or B or C, right? And then, and then it's the door, so it's a bar. Bar is here, so this is the symbol Okay, symbol of the door three. Okay, and then so which means it's a bar is here. So the output is inverted from the OR gate. So we can firstly uh, generate uh, some some output of the OR gate here, right? So it's a zero one 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 one. Right. Why? So I mentioned so this is the A plus B plus C. So it means the A or B first and then or C. So which means that oh this is the first or so if the one of A is uh, one of input signals is one, then output becomes one, right? So so this is the or gate. So or three is the zero, one, 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 but this is the door, so it should be one zero 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 zero. Right? Understand? How about the N? So you know the system A B C. Okay. So what does that mean? It is similar to the A B and C. Okay. The first end gate for the two inputs A and B. And then another end gate for the C. Okay, so what is the result? So result is actually zero 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 one. So do you understand? So actually, based on the definition, so or 
even though the input, if we can use the, the multiple input, the multi bit inputs for the so or gate or end gate, like the multi input logic gate. But based on definition, the or means that as I mentioned, the or means if one of inputs is one and missed, then the out becomes one. That is the definition. So the three input or gate is what this is the or gate. But for the three input or gate, so if the one of one of inputs is the one, then up becomes one by definition, and then it's inverted because this is no gate. How about the end gate? So we can also define end gate like the if O, if O bits are ones, then out becomes one. That is the definition. So only this case, one, 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 it becomes one. Otherwise, the result is zero. That is the definition of end gate. Okay. So actually, or and n, even though we use the multi inputs, uh, like the three inputs, or well, four inputs, and even though it's a five or six, seven, eight, then we can easily we can easily figure out the result, the result of multi input and or, or gate. Okay. Also, this table is called a truth table. So as you can see, truth table is here. So this table is called a truth table. So in the truth table, I define all input cases from 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1. And then based on the input values, the output result is defined in the truth table, right? right? So this table is called a truth table. Okay, so in all inputs are just defined, uh, all inputs are listed and then output is defined here, okay? And then when we uh, make a truth table, the input signals are ordered in the binary order. Okay, from 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, like this. So if you see the, the A, B, C here, then it, it, this, it starts from 0, 0, 0, and then 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, and then 0, 1, 1. That's a binary order from 0 to 3, right? So this is the truth table. Okay. Oh, there yeah, but Okay, then, then how about the three input exclusive or, like exclusive or three. So what is the result of exclusive or three? Like the A exclusive or B exclusive or C. <coughs> So for the exclusive or three, so it, it can be different. So actually the Boolean equation, the equation of the exclusive or three is the A exclusive or B and exclusive or C, okay? So, I will use the distrust table. Then, what is the output of three input exclusive or? So I mentioned that this is the y equal a exclusive or b exclusive or c, and then it's equivalent to the a exclusive or b and exclusive or c. Then what is the output? Output of the this exclusive or. So zero, 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 or oh, this is becomes zero. So we can just start from the here, okay? Okay, start from here. So it's a zero, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, right? From the exclusive or B, okay? 
then we can apply the exclusive or the result of A exclusive or B and C. Okay. So what is the output? Output is not zero. This is one, one, zero, one, three, one, zero, zero, one. So this is the output of three input exclusive or. Okay. So if we just uh, memorize, if we just understand the, the output of exclusive two input exclusive or, then you can you can also calculate the the output of three input exclusive exclusive or. Okay, like this. But what can you find? So what is the definition? For the three input exclusive or so, so this is zero zero zero. The inputs are zero, all zeros. Output is zero. But input is zero zero one. Then output is one zero one zero. Output is one. How about the one one? It's zero. How about the, this one? This one. Oh, not this one. <laughs> So if we see the uh, truth table, a truth table of three input exclusive or uh, we can observe, we can observe that if there are one one and one one here and then one one here, and then three ones here. So what does that mean? If if the number of ones for the input bits is a odd number, whose odd number can out becomes one. Do you understand? So in the three input exclusive or if the number of input, so if the inputs include odd number of ones then output becomes one okay that's why we can use the multi-bit exclusive or as the parity checker so so if you see that this this uh this sentence that's it so you can find that multi input exclusive or it's the old to in a so we can use the multi input exclusive or to detect the odd parity. So which means that if the number of ones is a odd number, then output becomes one. Okay, so we can use the exclusive or for checking. No parity. So why did I why did I explain? Because so actually this property is frequently used in the binary data processing. Okay, actually like the error correction or error detection. Okay, we can easily use the exclusive or to check the the parity, other parity of the inputs. So until this slide, so I uh, explained about the, the basic logic. Chain. So and then I I believe I believe uh, this is not this, this is not correct, right? This is not tricky, right? So as, as like the <clears throat> one plus one equal two, and then it's just the definition. Okay, so you can just uh, understand the definition of the logic operation, like the not gate. Then actually, and actually, you can memorize. You you need to memorize the four different logic gate, like not gate, end gate, or gate, and exclusive or, and that's it. The other logic gates are some combination of so these four logic gates. Okay, and then based on the these logic gates, we can make a computer. Actually. And it's true.
Okay, so now uh, this is a different topic. And then, <clears throat> so I will uh, explain about the, some uh, logic levels. So actually, this is, uh, it's a, so actually, in this part, what did this part? It's it's a, it's a relatively easy, but uh, this is so actually in this part. So uh, we will uh, explore the, some real world problem, but real world issues. So actually, it's uh, it may be uh, a little bit tricky because so we are familiar with the very uh, simplified so simplified. Uh, the definition of the some digital signals, but uh, <clears throat> we use we use our uh, digital systems or digital devices in the real world. Okay, and then I also mentioned that in the real world, all type of signals are analog signals. All signals are analog, not digital. Okay, so like the, this, you, you are seeing the uh, this uh, project uh, some screen, but this is the some light signal, okay, light. Okay, actually light actually based on the intensity of the light, then you can see the some a black line and white white uh, background here, but. Those signals are defined by intensity, intensity of real light. And then this, this real light signal is an analog signal, okay? It's a continuous signal. So actually, we are interacting with analog world. And then, you know, the real world is not ideal. So what does it mean? Our real world is not ideal. It's not perfect. Okay, so which means that the analog signals, analog signals are not ideal. It's not clean. Okay, so it means that it's dirty. Because our world is not ideal, so you may think that so some some bad things or some. Bad events can happen in our real, real world, right? It's the same to the analog world. So, so for the analog signal, so we can just think that oh, there's a white signal and then there's a black black signal, black light signal. But actually, these signals are not perfectly white and not perfectly black. Okay. So what does that mean? Actually, in the analog signal. Noise, noise can be included in the original signal. So I mentioned that even though we can think that oh this is white white light signal and this is the black light signal, then we can say that oh this is pure white and this is the pure black. But it's not true. It's not pure white. It's not pure black. Even though we generate the pure white, you know projector, but the, this analog signal, signal is not pure white. Why? Because noise, noise is included and added in the, this analog signal to the original signal. Then what is noise? What is the definition of noise? It's not an original signal. But it's added to the some original signals and it changes. It changes the value of original signal. So I mentioned I use the word change, but actually it, it distorts. Okay? It distorts and it disturbs. It distorts the original signal. That is the Definition of noise. If there is no noise in the real world, then our world, our world will be very clean and perfect, ideal. So we don't need to actually we don't need to use the digital. But because of the noise, 
we need to we need to use the uh, this the system. So and then actually we need to const but and then so actually the the signals are digitized the discreted the digitized and then the digitized signals are handled in the digital system. But problem is that our digital systems need to interact with the, our real world, right? So it means that we require the real world signal, we need to convert real world signals to the digital signal. So it means analog to digital conversion, okay? So I, I just showed this figure in the previous class, right? So this is the analog signal. So this is kind of continuous signal. And then we can simply uh, define a threshold level. And then if the a signal is higher than the threshold level, then we can think that, oh, this signal is, is one. So higher, higher than threshold level. And then if the, this analog signal is lower than the threshold level, then we can simply say, that, oh, this is the zero. So this is one, so this is zero, this is one, and this is zero. That's what I said in the, in the first class, right? first class, second class, right? So analog signal, analog signals can be converted into digital signals like this. What is that? We can just define a threshold level and then we just compare the, the value of analog signals with the defined threshold level. And then if the higher one, lower zero. It's very simple, right? Right. And what's the problem? Our world is not simple, right? Or our world is not ideal. What's the problem? Because of noise, because of noise, the actual signal, not this one, actual signal looks like this. Okay? Noise. Noise is added in the original signal. So in the, the analog signal value, the analog signal values are also changed, also distorted. Okay, what's the problem? We define a threshold level and then we just compare the, the value of the value of analog signal with the threshold level. Then it's okay for the, this reason, right? So it is just still one. But how about the, this reason? Here and here and here and here. The problem is, oh, because of noise, it can be higher than or well, it can be lower than at this point. So it looks like actually. If we do not consider noise in the analog signal, and then if the, this analog signal is just converted like the, oh, compare the threshold level, and then, oh, it, this value is higher than the threshold, then it's one, lower than the threshold level, it's still zero, then the converted distance signal looks like this. The change is like this, and then, at this point, it, it will change like this. It fluctuates, fluctuates like this. So what's the problem? Even though the analog signal is converted into the digital signal, digital signal is still dirty. Okay, it's not, it's not clean. Okay, and then that's the problem actually. <clears throat> okay, so. Which means that actually in the, in the hardware, hardware, so we we are we are, we live in the real world, 
the hardware system, hardware system actually works with the analog signal, like the voltage level. Also in a CPU or in a circuit, that's actually all signals are analog signals, okay? Which means that we just uh, use the voltage level, and we can just use the current in the electric circuit. But these analog signals are just converted, and then represented like the digital signal. And then, so that is the digital discipline. So we simplify the, the behavior of analog signals, and then we can just understand, we can just understand the, the, the behavior of analog signal like the digital signal, okay? So in the logic level, we will learn how the analog signals are converted, okay? So in the digital signal, in the digital system, actually, uh, in, the, in the electric circuit, we just sense voltage level, okay? So voltage level. So, so it looks like this. So you can say, oh, this is the high voltage, and then this is the low voltage. But actually, as I mentioned, the voltage level change continuously. Okay. But in the digital system, we just convert the high voltage. Okay, like, like the VDD, like the one is a VDD, and then low voltage is the ground. But in the in the in the real circuit, we assume that actually if we just understand the, the system like a digital system, we assume that oh the, the signal is converted like this. So rectangularly, it's high and it's low, it's high and low. You can find the rectangular uh, wave from here, but in reality, the voltage level changes continuously like this. Because of noise, but also because of uh, because of some parasitic components in the circuit, <laughs> some other some non-ideal components in the circuit. Okay, it's not easy to explain, but because of uh, in in <clears throat> not not perfect circuit property, we cannot make we cannot make rectangular signal like this. We cannot make clean signal. So, but in the, in the digital system, even though the signals are dirty, <laughs> we understand, we can just consider, oh, these values are one and these values are zero. But you, so this is the example. So zero is the ground, ground signal is a low voltage, it's the zero, and then VDD, or some other volt, the high voltage is the one. How about the this value? 4.99. So zero or one, 3.2, zero or one. Okay, we need to decide. We need to translate. So we need that is the logic level. Okay. So actually, so I will. I need to, so I need to explain about the, the, this uh, logic level in the next uh, class, okay? okay? So I will I will explain about the, this logic level and then some noise margin in the next class. Also in the next class, I will explain about the parentheses. It's a kind of another one, okay? Any question? Thank you for your listening. See you in the next class. Thank you.